What's up guys, Speed here, and today I'm excited to bring you the top 5 heroes of patch 7.22f that you should be playing in order to get a step ahead of your enemies. Now, over the last patch we saw some pretty significant buffs, but I'm not gonna lie, it was mostly just minimal nerfs, nothing nothing too crazy, like, for instance, Centaur's Retaliate got reduced by a little bit, but that's not what we're gonna be talking about. We're gonna be talking about the few heroes that received very cool buffs that you can abuse to win your games. This pro guide you're about to see is one of hundreds, just like it, over at GameLeap.com. GameLeap is your number one stop to become a specialist in your desired role fast. Check us out today with the discount link in the description below to unlock your hidden potential, but for now, let's hop into the video. And the first one I want to talk about is one that I've actually seen a couple times now. I just played a game with it, I played a game as it, I played a game before the patch came out as a hero, and in general, it feels like no matter how your lane goes, this Abaddon offlane, you will have impact. Now first off, what I want to talk about is the skill build for Abaddon, because if you play this hero wrong in the laning stage, you're going to struggle. First off, you want to take your Mist Coil if you think it's a hard lane, right? That's the reason why I really like Abaddon. You have this option. You can take Mist Coil in the hard lanes. A, to get last hits when you don't have to approach in melee range, and B, to deny yourself when they're harassing you a lot. Not only that, I want to mention at the beginning of this patch that Abaddon received a base attack speed increase from 115 to 120 and a base armor increase by 1. And this means that he trades right clicks better. That's it. And his passive, Curse of Avernus, I believe is one of the most underrated trading spells in Dota. If you're playing against a weak lane, like a Spectre CM, or and maybe like a, a Terrible Blade Shadow Demon, something you can really run at, Curse of Avernus, level 1, actually applies absurd pressure on the laning stage. Not only is it a straight up basic slow of 10% in level 1, but when you proc it, everyone hitting the person gets 40 attack speed and you slow them for 30%. 30%! And all you have to do is right click them. Not only that, 7.22e, the debuff got increased from 4 to 5, making it even easier to get the 4 stacks. In general, in general, this ability is actually nuts for trading. It's unbelievable how frustrating it is to get silenced, take more right clicks, like basically have an attack speed to buff on you, and have 30% less movement speed. Not only that, you have your aphotic shield later on, which basically means, as I said earlier, no matter how your landing stage goes, you can purge people and really help turn a team fight with good positioning. Now, in terms of item build, what I recommend is that you go for more of a right clicky type of build. And by that, I mean you go for face boots, you go for drums, a medallion, a wand, maybe even bracers if you feel like you're, you're having a good game, but really focusing on the right click aspect of Abaddon and trying to abuse the fact that if you get Curse of Vernus on someone, you can just completely remove them from the fight, or you can really push towers extremely extremely quickly not only that i highly recommend you even consider going a blink dagger in the mid game because how curse of avernus works is if you get gone on and you turn on your curse the blink dagger will no longer get cancelled by all the damage that's being done to you which means that you can split push endlessly and go in very bad positions and still blink out of basically any situation this is super good for creating space on the map whether or not you're ahead or behind next up on this list is what i mentioned as the best or the most buffed hero of this patch and that was tinker now to talk about tinker I, i'm still not convinced with this hero his early game i mean it can be good you can have a good landing stage if you're if you're comfortable on the hero but he takes a couple items to really come online not only that you have to play extremely defensive and it's a very high mechanical skill hero where i recommend you play at least 20 games before really even considering bringing this hero to ranked unless that's like how you are you're just playing ranked anyway but he got some massive talent buffs the 100 cast range 125 or spell amp, and then most notoriously, or I mean, I, I guess most beneficial talent change was the 11% mana cost, mana loss reduction. And what I'm gonna recommend that you try out is you still go for the typical like bottle, soul ring bots, and blink, but then you opt to go for an Aether Lens and a Kaya, and basically what this will allow you to do is stay in the trees for absurd amounts of time. If you hit the level 15 mark with a cast range, you can stay all the way back in the trees, spam rockets, and then even pick up an Axe after that and have insane impact in the team fights and be able to cast almost infinite rounds of spells. Next up on this list is Chaos Knight Safely. Now, I just recently made a video on Chaos Knight Safely, so if you are considering this after I give you my little spiel about him, go check it out. It's an Arteezy replay. I think he plays the hero absolutely fantastically and will give you a full breakdown on what you need to do to actually excel on Chaos Knight. Now, the reason why I think Chaos Knight is so good right now is his laning stage is straightforward. What I've realized with a lot of 
players is they don't really fully understand when they should trade in the landing stage. In fact, you're probably confused, like, sometimes I win lanes, sometimes I don't. But for Chaos Knight, if you follow what I say in the video, which is primarily level up your passive and hit people, when your passive is up, it's very easy to know when to trade, right? You're going to win the trade naturally because you have lifesteal and a built-in crit on a four second cooldown. It is very easy to lane as this hero. And not only that, you might be like, well, my farming capability is off. But honestly, guys, people farm very poorly for the majority of brackets in Dota. Last sits are low for what they want to optimally be. And as a result, Chaos Knight is a hero that likes that environment where people aren't that farmed. Because what he farms is typically lane creeps. And as a result, your CS is going to stay, you know, even if it's generally low, it's going to match out with the other heroes because, you know, people aren't being as efficient as they should. And as a result, your hero naturally has a very strong spike where you have your ultimate, then you have a couple small items and you're stronger than everyone else due to the fact that, you know, it's almost impossible for the majority of heroes to man up to Phantasm. Not only that, the reason why I bring him up specifically in this video is that in 7.22F, he received a big buff, at least in my opinion, where Reality Rift cooldown got reduced from 20 to 14 at level 1, and it's even less at level 2 as well. Importance of this is that you want to max out your stun and your E now, so this is a fantastic value point. Overall, his stun has gotten buffed, his passive, I believe, even got buffed a few patches ago, if I'm not mistaken, now Reality Rift got buffed, and I think it's a fairly easy hero to play. You ult, you pull people in, and you smack them down. It doesn't get more simple than that. Next up on this list is a support, and really I don't have too much to say about Bounty Hunter, but I'm really convinced this is still one of the better solo queue heroes. As I mentioned with CK, people's last hits are bad, but people go for kills, players and games, think about this, right? You're probably like, oh yeah, this happens in my games. Kills are the main priority. People just want to go for kill, 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 kill. I'm going to go for maybe a last hit, no, a kill, and Bounty Hunter loves that environment, similar to CK. The killing environment is good for these heroes due to the fact that they're very strong fighters, right? They're very, very good at that. And Bounty in particular got a buff that I think enables him to even use this early game more effectively. And that buff was Shuriken Toss Mana Cost reduced from 150 to 135. Now what I'm going to suggest is that to make your landing stage simple, you buy either a Stout Shield, 6 Tangos and 3 Mangos, or something along those lines. But basically you buy some Mana Regen, you level Shuriken Toss at level 1, and you throw it only at the carry. Try this out, guys. Don't throw it at the supports. It's an 8 second cooldown. It does 150 damage at level 1. Just buy some mangoes and chuck shurikens at the carry. That is it. Then at level 2, you can even take your Janata and hit the carry for another bonus 70 damage. Equaling up to a total of, what, like 220 damage just from these spells, not including right clicks. At level 3, then you can take your Shadow Walk and you hit a spike where you're just one of the most annoying heroes in Dota. But I think Shuriken Toss is very underrated. It makes the laying stage super simple. I, it really doesn't get more straightforward than that. Just cast it on the carry, not on the support. Listen to me there. Harass the person going for the last hits, not the one trying to help them get the last hits. And the last thing I want to say about Bounty is go for more of a movement speed build. So for a while, uh, it, it's fallen off a lot more hardcore. But there was like Greaves builds or like Solar Crest based builds, which I actually think Solar Crest is the better... Uh, version, but what I'm going to recommend similar to the Abaddon is that you're enabling your right clicks and that you pick on supports in the fights. So basically your goal as a bounty hunter, this is how I would map it out, is in the landing stage, harass the carry with Shuriken and Janata, and in the mid game, you want to buy drums, phase boots, and then either like a solar crest or a BKB, like literally no joke, third item BKB is very legit on bounty hunter, and run at the supports and solar crest the enemy carry. That is it. It's going to make your fight super, super easy as most supports can't deal with the high movement speed of Bounty Hunter and the fact that you deal half their health with one Shinada and a Shuriken Toss. In fact, it can do more depending on how farmed you are. Basically, being a fourth core in a solo queue is the bomb. And last up on this list, staying in the realm of Indus heroes, we have Ricky. Yes, yes, Ricky. Still one of the best pub heroes in Dota, similar to CK, similar to Bounty Hunter. They do not have good farming capabilities. Ricky is the same way. None of your spells help you farm. You don't have Phantom Strike. You don't have Conjure Image. You don't have Blink. You have nothing. You have not. You have nothing. You could be like, oh, but my backstab. It's hard to use. <laughs> it's so bad with for creeps. But that's good. That's I, okay. It's generally good <laughs> because if people aren't last hitting and you're playing around kills, Ricky is very good at that. 
he does super high amounts of damage and recently got a massive buff increasing blink strike cast range at every single level right it's actually noticeable I, I had a ricky in my game who strictly only got first blood due to this buff at least that's what it appeared to be and it's bonus damage is insane at level one it's 50 mana on a 10 second cooldown and does 75 bonus damage as well as uh, basically allows you to hit them in the, in the back so it's similar to like a shuriken toss type of damage it's super strong and what i recommend is that you try to play him as a core i think he's best as a pause three pretty solid as a pause one can be literally played mid or if you feel like your laning stage is good enough maybe you have an enchantress you can get away with it as a pause four right but the important thing is that you push in lanes until you get your defusal and then you start making plays once you hit this point people waste all their gold on sentries you really burn out their net worth and you solo kill the majority heroes in dota not only that i think ricky has one of the best talent trees in dota at level 10 eight agility is pretty good six hp regen is decent but where it gets real fancy the eight second smoke screen cooldown makes smoke screen a three second cooldown three seconds it's a 70% mischance on a 3 second cooldown. Not only that, it slows. And it silences. Yes. Yes, it's that good. And then at level 20, you get the cast range, making you the hardest hero in Dota to kill, seemingly. And then at level 25, you get the tricks of the trade. And if you get Ags at that point, yeah, with the AoE 300, it's a lot of damage. It's a lot of damage. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video of top heroes to try in 7.22f. I'm really fond of these heroes and it's something I'm going to be trying out and maybe even heroes that I'll look into making more in-depth videos for the main website as I think they have a lot of potential. I've yet to actually see the Tinker Men be played out but I'm very confident from comments I've read, Discord messages, friends I've talked to that Tinker Mid has a lot of potential and Abaddon Offlane is a personal favorite of mine. This hero is very, very easy to play. You heal, you throw on shields, and you auto attack the enemy. And it's also great that if you're uncomfortable with positioning and you don't really know what you're doing yet, maybe you're even newer to Dota, this is a great hero to try out because your ultimate is just a fail safe. You mess up, you get a second chance, especially if you have a blink dagger, you can get out of any sticky situation. So give that a try. That's what I'm really going to i uh, like to see. Let me know. Ping me in the Discord how that goes for you guys. I'd love to hear. Thanks for watching. Please do like and subscribe to help our channel grow. And hopefully I'll see you in the next video. Are you tired of being hard stuck at your rank? Over at GameLeap.com, we have a library of hundreds of guides authored by pro players and coaches covering literally every aspect of Dota. Whether you're looking to master a new hero or role or just polish up your existing skills, GameLeap is the proven place for competitive gamers to hone their craft and unlock their secret potential. Hit the link on screen right now, right now, to take advantage of our special offer for a 25% discount, guys, 25%, and start your journey today.